best selling author of multiple books, including your newest book, Sold Out How Broken Supply Chain, Surging Inflation, and Political Instability Will Sink the Global Economy. And I also know, Jim, you have a new book coming out in November. Folks can go ahead and pre order that Money, GPT, AI, and the Threat to the Global Economy. And Jim, you are certainly a friend of this show and our audience absolutely loves having you on. I do too. And I can't think of a more important and critical time to have you on. I know we scheduled this several weeks ago. And Jim, I'd love to start where we always start with our guests. And that is to get the big picture macro view where we are today. But I also imagine a lot of that's going to involve what's happening in the political sphere as well. So I would love to just hand it to you. Take all the time you need to set the table when it comes to the big picture where we are today. Thanks, Joel. It's good to be uh, back with you. Thanks for that um, introduction. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of writing and, uh, you know, books and newsletters and all that and interviews and people say, well, Jim, where, you know, where do you get, uh, you know, uh, you're highly prolific, how do you do all that? I said, well, there's never a shortage of material. When I sit down at the keyboard to write something, there's just, like, you have to pick which story to follow because there's so many. I gave a speech in um, Boca Raton uh, about a week ago. And I, per- I said to the audience, I said, I'm not going to talk about Joe Biden or Donald Trump. You, see, you hear, not, hear a lot about that. And I talked about three other topics, the war in Ukraine, uh, the BRICS um, currency, which is not here yet, but it's coming, um, and the currency wars. And those are three really big, important topic, but, topics. But the point I was making is that, yeah, we're all obsessed with, not obsessed, but I, mean, I think properly, indeed, focused on uh, the Trump assassination, the fact that Biden's probably going to be out of the race within a matter of days, um, you know, polling results. Um, the, we all know what happened with the Biden press conference and, or sorry, the uh, debate in June and all that. But um, while that's all going on, there are the, there there are two two wars, actually multiple wars, confrontations in the South China Sea. So there's there's a lot going on that uh, would be hugely significant if we didn't have U.S. domestic uh, political turmoil, but we do. Um, so maybe. Um, it's so, okay, Julie. I'll spend a couple minutes absolutely on the, on the assassination attempt because uh, uh, you know, thank uh, thank God, Trump is okay, and uh, our prayers are with the um, the individual who was killed and several who were badly wounded. Uh, so we're not, um, you, you know, we're thinking of them and their families as well. Um, but the fact that the shooting is over does not mean this event is over by any means. The um, this was such bad performance by the Secret Service uh, and that I, I've sort of got three levels. The best thing I can say about them, the best thing is that they were grossly negligent. If you were, that's kind of a legal term, but if you were suing them, you'd have an open and shut case. They they didn't follow standard operating procedures. They didn't follow their own rules. They There was an obvious sniper's nest on that roof, adjacent roof. Um, they didn't cover it. They didn't see it. People were uh, people in the crowd, the attendees were warning them, hey, there's a guy on the roof He's crawling up to the ridge. He's got a rifle. And there were, uh, you hear different accounts, but there were um, perhaps 30 minutes or more, uh, maybe 50 minutes by some accounts, between the first sighting and and the shooting. Um, and at one point, the, the, the shooter was there, you know, Thomas uh, Crook, uh, Crooks was there earlier with a rangefinder. Uh, now, rangefinders were used by hunters, maybe who was hunting Trump, and golfers, because you want to know how far you are from the from the pen, it's you know, it's kind of a laser uh, distance uh, measuring device. What are you doing with a rangefinder at a Trump event unless you're trying to, you know, shoot somebody? So, uh, and yet nothing was done. Nothing was done despite all those warnings. Uh, the director uh, or head of the U.S. Secret Service uh, was Kimberly Cheadle. Um, she hadn't had a lot to say, but she they, they said, "Why didn't you have counter snipers like your own people looking for snipers?" counter snipers on the roof of that building. She said, well, the, the roof was kind of, she used the word slopey, it was sloped. Yeah, show me a roof that's not sloped. I mean, there are some flat roofs around, but most of them are sloped. Um, and it was too dangerous for, to put the counter snipers up there. Well, first of all, these people, danger is their duty. Their job is to put them, their bodies between a shooter and the president, take a bullet for the president and a lot else besides. So the danger just comes with the job. That's the job description. So to say it was too dangerous, afraid somebody's going to fall off the roof. Well, what about somebody getting killed, which is what happened. Um, and then the the roof, there were counter snipers there closer to Trump. The roof that they were on was more steeply pitched than the roof 
where the where the shooter uh, where the attempted uh, where the assassin was. Um, and so, oh, so it's okay to be on this roof, but not the other roof. None of it made sense. She's lying. She should resign. Um, and the other thing I can say to the viewers is uh, we have not heard the end of it. Again, thank God the assassination attempt itself is over. Um, there, there's, there's just there's so many factors. I could do 30. There's no need to. Again, I think the readers uh, get a lot of coverage on this. But um, why there were events by... Uh, Jill Biden and Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania the same day. Interesting coincidence. Uh, they said they had to send some of the A-team Secret Service officers to those events, which is one reason why Trump's detail was not up to full strength, number one. And some of those agents were kind of temporary assignments from the Pittsburgh office. They weren't the, I was called the A-team. Um, not blaming the agents, but one of them was about five foot seven. She was kind of chubby. Trump's 6'3". How do you create a body shield of a six six foot three inch man with a five foot seven inch Secret Service agent? You need an agent who's six foot four, you know, male or female, but you know, at least be taller than the protectee. Um, she couldn't holster her gun. Um, three of the agents were running around. I mean, you know, I'm, they look like the Keystone Cops. I mean, they were running around in circles. One person was more concerned with getting her sunglasses back on and protecting the president. Um, they uh, they clearly didn't know what they were doing. Uh, and so so you're short staffed. You got the B team instead of the A team. You failed to secure the most obvious sniper perch. If you were going to shoot somebody, that's exactly where you would go. The guy was out there for hours earlier with the rangefinder, bought a ladder, bought 50 rounds of ammo that morning. He was using an AR-15 with uh, 556 caliber ammunition. That's uh, an AR-15 will take a 22 or, or a 223, but the 556, that's a, that's a NATO round. That's a high pressure military grade uh, bullet. I've fired, a, I fired a AR-15s with 556 rounds in them. Um, they're extremely powerful uh, and they, there's very low recoil. The, you know, people kind of dismiss the AR-15 like some kind of crazy person weapon. It's actually a very accurate rifle. Um, it's, it's, Good for exactly what it was used for in this case, you know, hunting, target shooting, et cetera. Um, low recoil. It's you don't need a long barrel, you know, sniper rifle. It was only 150 yards away. I mean, you know, you go to a shooting range, they have 100 yard, 200 yard targets. This was not a difficult shot. So um, uh, again, I could go on and on, but the um, you know, I have no confidence in the ability of the FBI or uh, uh, you know, the, or the Department of Justice. Uh, or the Department of Homeland Security, which is headed by Mayorkas, who was impeached, by the way. Uh, I have no confidence in any of them to do a fair investigation. The Congress is going to have here, if not hearings, at least a, a classified briefing next week. They want to hear more from uh, from Kimberly Cheadle, again, who's the head of the, the Secret Service. Uh, again, now the shooter uh, is 20 years old, 20 or 21, has no social media profile. Right. So no Facebook, no Instagram, no TikTok, no uh, X, you know, formerly Twitter, et cetera. Um, show me a 20 year old who has no social media profile whatsoever. Seemed to have very few friends. Now, you can say he was a loner, maybe he had mental health issues. I don't know that for a fact, by the way. I'm just saying there's a possible rationales. But that would also fit the pattern of if you were setting somebody up to do this. That's the kind of person you would want. Again, very low profile. Um, so at best, this was gross negligence. At worst, it was a kind of um, uh, passive participation. And what I mean by that is, I'm not saying the Secret Service was out to shoot Trump. I'm saying the Secret Service conducted itself in such a way that if somebody else was out to shoot Trump, they made it pretty easy. Mm -hmm. It was, it was almost as if they, they were inviting a shooter, like, hey, doors open, come, come on in. That's how they set the security perimeter. I've seen aerial photographs with a red line that indicates this, the security perimeter that the Secret Service said, we've got this. And then they relied on local police and law enforcement to cover everything outside the circle. What's interesting is that it's not a circle. It's about three quarters of a circle. And when you get to the building where the shooter was, there's a there's a V-shaped indentation. It's almost like they went, they said, here's a circle. Oh. We'll just carve this out. It's like they went out of their way to carve out that section so they could leave it to local and state police. Um, this 
I worked for the CIA for 10 years and I know a lot about their history and um, assassinations, uh, special operations. This gives you what's called plausible deniability. Uh, again, it's like, yeah, we were kind of in on it, but uh, you can't point a finger at us because that was up to the local cops. By the way, the local cops got up at the roof and saw the guy with the rifle and then literally lost his balance and fell down, lost his grip and fell down. And they were frantically telling the, the Secret Service what was going on and, and nothing was done. So we got a lot, a lot more to say, but we know enough already, a lot more to say and a lot more to learn. But we know enough to, already to say that this is ne uh, gross negligence at best and some kind of passive participation at worst.